Welcome to the Craig and Greg Show, presented by Maximize Leadership. Now, here are Craig Owens and Greg Harris. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Craig and Greg Show. I am Craig. This is Greg. Um, I was meeting recently with a young man that I'm doing some leadership coaching with, and he asked me a really interesting question about meetings. He said he's stepping into a meeting, and it's his first time where he's going to be leading these meetings. Mm. And, and I thought, leading a meeting. We don't often think of meetings as a leadership tool, so mm. kudos to him for kind of getting my wheels turning of thinking, there is a way that we can lead through meetings. Unfortunately, I think there's a lot of people that just go, oh, meetings, you know, we got to have them, just get through them, just check them off the list. But I think we're kind of robbing ourselves of uh, a real powerful leadership tool there. Having been a part of a sales organization, you have sales meetings and you might have meetings with salespeople who either kudos or, hey, correction, you know. Interesting, most of the time when the meetings would occur, we'd have them early. Hey, get the salespeople out, you know, out on the road sure. or buying their computer or phones or whatever and get them working. A number of times I'd get this question, which leads to the value of a meeting, right? You know, I have to do a meeting versus right. I get to do a meeting, right? Sure. You're going to talk about that in a minute. But so this was more, how long's a meeting? I've got some important things to do. What? Because then they're saying the meeting's not. Yeah. Yeah. So the value of the meeting yeah. was discounted as they walked in thinking, I have other important money-making things to do. Sure. Hmm. Well, what if you learned a tool, an attempt or an approach or a practice in this meeting, yeah. sales meeting that you'd be smart with? <laughs> you know, and well, and I, and I've seen, and I, I've been in some meetings where the one chairing the meeting just takes, here's last month's agenda. I'm going to go copy paste and up at the top i'll change the date well if that's what the meeting is then yeah i bet you do have people coming into the meeting going how long do i have to sit through this to get to my real work right and but that's not really leading that's that's just really kind of a passive following what's already been done before i i like to in my in my leadership meetings um i like to have that component of let's all learn something together and so we might be um, there's been times that I've given everybody a book Excellent. and said, let's yeah. just read th this chapter is only five pages long. You can find some time between now and next week's meeting to read five, five pages. Mm -hmm. And then when you come in, I'm going to have a question maybe up on the whiteboard, or I'm going to have something sitting at everybody's spot that it ties into that. And, and let's dialogue. Let's, let's learn about this together. I think there's a lot of ways that you can make this beneficial for people that they're not just coming in and going, you know, same old, same old, same old. Right, yeah. It is tough to make a meeting interesting uh, from the get-go. But if you have regular meetings, people know that they're going to be contributing. They might report something. Mm -hmm. uh, you might send out a committee a memo yep. that the committee met over, whether it's finance or ministry or sales or whatever, and that gets around to everybody. So it should be pretty easy to pull people in, yeah. like to contribute. Yeah. And, and I think especially if you do ahead of time, if you say, hey, Joe, at next week's meeting, I want you to take the lead on right. this. I want right. you to walk us through. And I've also found, you know, there, there are some things that can be kind of dry. Uh, you know, if, there, if there's financial numbers that you need to look at, what I, what I don't like about those uh, kinds of things is when people, the person chairing the meeting kind of keeps that close to the vest. And then once you get in there, okay, here's all the numbers and you're like, you know, looking through, you're trying to read everything and trying to get up to speed all, you know, well, if you would have sent me that ahead of time, I could have looked through my report and gone, mm, I got a question about this part and I'm already prepared mm -hmm. then at the meeting. Hey, what questions do you have on this? Well, I, I noticed this one here where, what, why, why wait until spring it on people and they don't, they haven't had a chance to process and to think because then they're, again, they can't lead anything because they can't mm -hmm. offer anything. As a leader setting up a meeting or a leader who you need to attend a meeting, mm -hmm. different roles, if, if it's not your meeting, right. another thing to t chat about in a little bit. But I think for leaders having meetings, if people come there expecting something interesting, yes, 
um, or contributing something interesting. And I think that's what it's very fun to not be the only person talking at the meeting. Yes. Like, Hey Mary, you had a pretty cool prospecting story. Uh, tell us a little, just a story of how did you get it warmed back up and come back to a, another appointment after they said no. Right. And then she shares and the people are like, Ooh, no, no. What I, what I've done on that is I've actually said to Mary ahead of time, Hey, I heard about this story. Is this how it went down? That's really cool. Can you pre prepare to share five minutes at yep. the meeting? Excellent. And then, and, and I really want you to encourage people with, yeah, and and let them. It's just be a, ready. It's, it's just to invite to participate. Sure. You know, I think, um, you know, a couple of years ago we had the lockdown, and some states were amazing at not being infringing, and some states were horrible at infringing. And the cost was significant, you know, mm -hmm. momentum of people, culture of companies, profitability of companies. Um, and even now we can see the interaction has been reduced. Yep. There's a value in meeting, you know, whether you have to do it by zoom because someone's in New Hampshire and Denver, I get it. Right. But overall value in meeting it, there's, you can read things, you know, I can pick up, Hey Craig, you didn't say much about, but I know this happened and you can even be a, a sub leader, you know, to be the leader that called the meeting. Right. How do you encourage participation when maybe they're going like this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, what, what you already said, <clears throat> I don't think you want to, if, if everybody expects that you're going to be the only one talking th after a little bit, it's that, you know, Charlie Brown's teacher, you know, they're not hearing those words anymore. They're just, wah, 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 wah. you know, they're, they're not hearing words anymore. They are just sitting there thinking about, you know, how much longer is this? Or they're slowly pulling out their phone, trying to like, you know, respond to something on the phone without being too obvious about it. <laughs> but, but if you, if they know that you're going to get other people involved. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there's been some times where I'll tell people if it's not like, if I haven't prepared them ahead of time, I might give them a moment to think about it. I'll say, you know, in a second, we're going to go all the way around the room. I want to get ah. everybody to weigh in on this, but here's what I want you to be thinking of in terms of, mm -hmm. or along the lines of, right. and then I'll say, let me go first. I kind of see it like this. Let's just start over here. Mary, what do you think? Okay, Joe, you know, and you just kind of go around the table. If people know that that's coming, well, they're going to be paying attention because they don't want to be like, huh, what, who, um, I'm, what am I supposed to say? You know, that I wasn't, wasn't aware. There, there's a lot of ways to generate that. And right. I think the other thing too is as a leader, I've, to be honest enough that there are times that you say, hey, gang, really don't have anything to talk about this week. So we're not going to meet this week. I've done that. I have too. And, and the people are like, okay, cool. Yeah. You had the respect as the leader mm -hmm. to say, you know, I kind of want everybody around the table looking at me because it makes me feel good and important. Yeah. And the verses, I, there is nothing really, you know, you got your reports, which I really do encourage leaders. If you can get reports out, clearly we have to trust the people we're sending the email to. Yes. You know, but to send it to them, or to, to hand it out at the table and have them sit down and just go like this for, uh, can I just look at this a minute? No, I'm not ready to order the menu. I, I don't know what I'm going to get. Sure. That's what it feels like. Absolutely. Like chicken or uh, what? Um, well, I, I didn't look at it yet. I don't, are there any specials? And you quick try right. to go through it. Or you're trying to read this and trying to listen to the person talking up front. You, yeah. you simply can't do that. No, it's, it's, right. So to me, lear, learning to, to ha have a meeting, to run a meeting, to allow a meeting, there is a funny one. So you all can look it up if you want. But there's this coffee cup with a handle. It's a pretty big handle. And the coffee cup has the bottom in the middle of the cup. You can turn it over and you get a half a cup of coffee or you can turn it right side up and get a half a cup of coffee. But that's how long a meeting should go. Yeah. That was the point of the cup, sure. the coffee cup. Weigh in on that. Like, you know, can we hurry up a meeting and say, hey, you've got the memo on it, read it, you know, right back, Mary, she's running that department or that project. Is there a way to make it more efficient? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I, I, I remember with, with one of my teams, I used to have on Friday afternoon, because the weekends were our big time that we had a lot of guests on the, the ground. And so Friday at lunchtime, we had a five-minute stand-up meeting in the lobby. 
Don't don't bring a chair in. Remember that because we're we're not going to sit down. This is five minutes, and it might not even be five minutes. It's just walk in here, call a huddle, right? And we've already sent out to everybody. Here's all of the groups that are going to be around this week. Here's what's on their schedule, on their agenda. Here's who's assigned to all these different things. And it was just a, a a quick meeting to say, is anybody unclear? Have we missed something? Yeah, and then some, awesome. somebody might, you know, a lot of times they weren't talking to me. Actually, I didn't even chair that meeting. Somebody else ran that meeting. I was just there. But sometimes there would be just two people that would say, hey, um, can we can we swap these two times that work to your schedule if we just did that? Okay, great. And, and then, you know. I'm, I'm going to interrupt you, though. That, you were there. Yes. Even though it wasn't your meeting. Correct. Speak to that for leadership. Well, it's, I, I mean, if it's if I'm not there, then the meeting takes on less importance if you're the point leader Mm -hmm. if you if you say well you you go to this meeting but i don't need to it's beneath me it's what then yeah then it's a garbage meeting it's a waste of time and how do you get that back if you start setting that culture no you you can't tough isn't it right yeah people they value or prioritize what what you do yeah i mean that's pretty much why they're saying as as a leader you influence others we're, we're influencing how they think, what they see. Yep. There, there was a little sarcastic quote that I thought was quite interesting about meetings. So you know, it, it, the people who love meetings should not be in charge of anything. <laughs> I thought, ooh, that's kind of spicy. That's a little sassy. But the people that love the meetings, and you've had a career of meetings, I've had a career of meetings, pretty much that's right. Yep. The person that called the meeting really had nothing to say but just wanted everybody to be there. Right. Okay, we're, and I've had this, you've had this, when you add up and you've got a leadership team, C-level people, let's say you have six people around a table. That's quite a bit per hour yes. to not be efficient. Yes. Right? Um, I, I do like the, the, the huddle idea, you know, for five minutes. How do they do that if they don't have one location? Yeah. I I think it still can be the same thing with, you know, Hey, everybody just jump on the zoom for five minutes and it might not even be five minutes, but you have, you do have to honor that. You know, if you tell people it's going to be five minutes, it better be five minutes. Right. Um, because he always talks, you know, she always brings up. Absolutely. And then, and then those are the times that's part of the leading is to, uh, you know, to say, okay, um, listen, Sam, this is a five minute meeting and what you're bringing up is going to require a 30 minute conversation (laughs) and you're doing that kind of consistently. So this is the wrong meeting for that. We have to have a different meeting for this, but Mm -hmm. you know, and and I think the other thing that helps with the efficiency and the effectiveness of a meeting or the meaningfulness of the meeting is not every meeting involves every person. I, so I, I would rather have um, more meetings with, specific people there. So, you know, you might have, um, a creative meeting. There's, um, some people that you're not going to invite because they're just not, they have a hard time thinking outside of the box. And so you give a chance for some people to attend these meetings that maybe don't attend any other meetings, but boy, they just got brilliant brainstorms. And so they feel like, hey, this is this is very valuable to me to be able mm-hmm. to be there. And maybe there's only two people in that meeting. And then you've got another one. Um, we're going over the finances. I don't really need a couple of my sales guys in there. Right. Uh, the, there's nothing for them to. You know, this is meaningless to them. But um, so I'd rather have more meetings. Keep them shorter. Keep them smaller. Have everybody in that meeting know that. Because you, the reason why you're here is because you have to participate in this meeting. Right. It's not one where you just come in, um, you know, with your crossword puzzle and you're going to sit there and fill out the crossword puzzle while somebody's talking. Because, you know, I, I don't have anything to contribute and I'm not going to hear anything that's going to change my mind. I'm just here because I have to be here. Well, then, th- then that's you're not leading through a meeting there. No. You're just like yeah. like you just pointed out. You're like, okay, how you, this is your salary and you were here for this many minutes. That's quite a bit of money that we're mm-hmm. wasting on you not doing anything. Yeah. I think setting expectation is a key step for a leader mm-hmm. on how the meeting should go, who should be at the meeting, what should be discussed in the meeting. Can we table that for the committee that yes. you're on? I mean, yep. so maybe, maybe just express a little bit there on how, how do we make this 
more efficient, I guess, yeah. or more effective. Well, I, I'm a big fan of sending out the agenda for the meeting well in advance. Thank you. Not a copy and a paste. Um, so that people know exactly what it is that we're going to talk about and even have like, you know, maybe listed there, um, the, this person is is taking this topic. This person's taking this topic. There's been several meetings that you know when I just come in, I just say, um, "Hey, good morning, everyone." Um, Joe, and we're just on to the first item, and Joe already knows he's leading that that part of that discussion. And then, a lot of times, these meetings after after you know you get to know the team and stuff, you don't have to say, "Okay," and now on to item number two, and that's Sue. You don't have to say anything. Right. Joe Joe gets done, and Sue knows she's next up, and she just starts. Yeah. And the meetings are very efficient. They're very timely. They say what they need to say, mm -hmm. and you know, okay, great meeting, everyone. <laughs> I'll I'll share something my grandpa said. Be careful of a committee meeting. Your goal was a horse, and you'll end up with a donkey. Yep. I've done that before. Yep. I've also played the a little bit of a agenda help game of Sue is going to talk and I might put in five minutes parentheses mm -hmm. because then you can chronicalize all the segments, the reports and say, I have enough material for about an hour and 10 minutes. Yep. yep. And uh, maybe we could shrink it or if someone else has something else to say, I love pushing directors, mm -hmm. managers to send the report out on what it's going with and maybe highlight how it's going with some questions yep. so that people are like, so I read the report last Tuesday, we're meeting next Monday, I got six days, I read it, uh, talks about this, this and this. I think it's helpful for people to get that info. Yep. Why do you think we don't do that? What's the leadership thing there? I Well, I, I don't know that I'd call it a leadership thing. I, I just, I think that there's a lot of people that their idea of leadership is to keep everything so close to the vest. Like, mm. I don't want to share this information with anybody because then might, people might say, well, why do we need you around? Because we've got everything. And, and I, I think, I don't, I don't know what goes through people's minds when they do that. Like, why, why can't you tell us up, up front what it is that we're going to talk about? Why, why do you have to wait until we get there to here's the financial report. Let's talk about how to cut this one budget's expenses. This is the first time I'm looking at it. Right. You know, if you gave me a few days, I, I, I might right. be able to ask some questions and think some things through. So I'm, I'm not sure why the need to, to try to keep that so close to the vest, some kind of control issue, I guess, but, I control. but I'm, I'm just, I want to try to empower as many people as I can. And in those small settings, that's the opportunity where you get a, a, a chance to watch somebody a little bit closer and say, you know, I noticed they really came alive when, when we have, I started having this discussion. I saw the corner of my eye, I turned mm -hmm. and looked and, and saw how engaged they were. Yeah. I wonder where I could get them plugged in to really tap into that a little bit more. Yeah. So that's, that's what gives me an opportunity to, to see that in people. Well, I, th I think some leaders really do love the orchestra. Mm -hmm. Everyone plays a cool instrument. You know, you can uh, actually take your baton and point to the woodwinds or right. you know, strings and they play their little vignette part of the big song, right? But do you really know the band director, orchestra director really that well? Not really. No. They just get us started, right. you know, and they keep it on beat, yep. you know, and everybody contributes. And I think that's what like an orchestra or a band concert should be what a meeting is. The leader's there, but interesting, he has the back to the crowd. Yeah. It's not about him or her. Nope. It's about timing, right. keeping, um, keeping the rhythm. So that, that might be a good analogy to, yeah. um, you talked about, you know, being con uh, conscious or careful of people's workloads in some of our, our conversations right. prior to our podcast. How would we know that their workloads? I mean, how do you, do, do we hear from well, them? Do we yeah. ask them? Yeah. I mean, the first thing, I, I mean, I think, I think, you know, you and I have talked about this so many times about like walking around right. and knowing what's going on. But I think, you know, a simple thing of like watching people like they keep checking their watch. Okay, yeah. so clearly this guy has checked out at some point or there's something going on. What I've tried to do too to be conscious of people's times is find a time that we're already doing something. So like mm. um, at my church, I have my board meetings on Sunday morning. They're already coming to church. Excellent. So let's just have the board meeting then. So just, just come a little earlier. 
I don't need you to like come special, to church on Sunday yeah. and then come back on Tuesday night for a meeting. Uh, uh, we're already there. So I, I that's why. Well, you, and you've been then at sign up made a meeting as a part of worship. Yeah. And, and, and huh. then, you, and then I got a hard out too on, on time. You know, everybody wow. knows we got to cover everything that we need to cover by this time. I like it. Um, I, I love having meetings. Um, let's, let's meet during lunch. It, you know, everybody bring your lunch into the room if you want to brown bag it, or we're going to, you know, mm. we're going to run up, send somebody up to, to get some subs or, or something like that. Yeah. We're going to, everybody's going to take a break for lunch anyhow. So let's, let's do, let's meet, let's mm -hmm. have our conversation at the same time yeah. that we're doing that. So yeah. I think that if you're, if you're conscious of people's time, if you're aware of what's going on mm -hmm. with their thing, if you're paying attention to the, you know, What's, uh, how much longer is this going to be? You, you know, then, then you can start tailoring that. You, you know, I don't think you're going to have like the perfect meeting agenda right out of the gate, but oh. you can certainly, you adjust that over time. You find the sweet spot for that group. Um, and like I said, there are times that you go, you know, I was just kind of going through here. Um, all I got to do is send an email out to everybody. I just need you to tell me how many of this or what happened with this. So just hit reply all so everybody can see the answers. And we don't need to meet this week. I like that. Well, Two last points to kind of tee it up for you. One is we talked about the time, like too long of a meeting or too many meetings, right? And what could be done by an, a note or an email or a brief or a small group right. versus the, the total team. Yeah. So I think the one thing is, you know, meetings feel endless, but they should be eternal. Like our influence of a yes. meeting should be eternal, right? Yes. Lastly, give a little coaching on when there's someone who always has to talk mm. and they go down a rabbit trail that isn't on the agenda right. or that was already talked about before, right. how do we handle that gracefully? And then you can wrap it up. Yeah, that, that is tough. And that's the reason why I like to put the agenda out and say, you know what, you've, you've, you're bringing up a great point here. We do need to discuss that. You've obviously thought about this quite a bit and the rest of us haven't yet. So can you put that in writing can can you tell us what's going on in writing let's email that out to the team so that we can have time to process it and get our th heads wrapped around it and then i'm going to put that on the agenda for next time so that we can so we can discuss that I like it. um you, you know then that way they're validated they hear that but the rest of your team as well knows hey he's going to protect our time He's, he's not going to mm -hmm. let the, the meeting Respects go, it. you know, yeah. that, and, and I think I like what you said too. Like sometimes you need to put on there, like we, if we can't come up with what we're going to do with this thing in five minutes, that's a whole separate issue. So, I mean, this is, this is not for us to solve a problem maybe on this time. It's just for us to simply talk about where we are. If mm -hmm. we think there's a problem, that's a, that's a different mm -hmm. meeting. It might be even a different group that some people don't have to be a part of. So. You, you triggered a, a thought. I've, I've been a part of a meeting where two people had something to discuss. Maybe it was good or maybe it was a tension or a misunderstanding, but you know, it, it's those two responsible people. I've enjoyed saying, you know what? The rest of us just look forward to you two coming together with some ideas or solutions. Can we have you guys meet, you, whether today or the next day, and just tell us what you guys figured out? Versus have 13 people right. listening to Two people talk. What, what are we going to serve for our company, our employee appreciation lunch? Yep. I think we're all interested in food, but not, you know, where are we going to get our craft cheese? You know, that kind of a thing. So I think the, the challenge is that balance of making sure it's fruitful time. But if no, not everyone should be a part of the convo, I, I, I really enjoyed saying, why don't you guys pause, meet, and tell us what you kind of came up with yep. and you've empowered them. Right. Yep, absolutely. Well, like I said, at the beginning, this whole idea for me <laughs> was triggered by a, a guy that I'm uh, working with in a coaching setting saying, Hey, can you talk to me about these meetings? So that's what we like to do in our coaching sessions as well. If you go to maximizeleadership.com, you get a lot more information about what's going on. We can find out about Greg's books that uh, he has available for you. A lot of great things there. But one of the things that you'll see on that website is about our coaching. So click on that, read a little bit about the coaching, fill out the 
form on the bottom and just tell us what it is that that you're wanting to grow where where do you want to grow where do you want to expand we'll read that we'll get back to you and we'll let you know what we can do for you but there really is no limit to the topics that are very important to you that we can help you coach on that. So uh, get in touch with us on that. If you have general ideas, say, hey, you know, I think this uh, might be good for a lot of leaders or emerging leaders to hear about. Why don't you leave that as a comment below or on Twitter? You can uh, tweet at us at Maximize Podcast. Give us an idea of something that you'd like us to uh, discuss in an upcoming episode, and we will work that in for you. We're here to resource you and help you get better as a leader. So stay tuned because we've got lots more great content coming up for you soon. Get in touch with Craig and Greg through Twitter at Maximize Podcast or at MaximizeLeadership.com. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any episodes of The Craig and Greg Show.